You're listening to the Tipsy Photographer Podcast, the show for artists who've had shots but still need to shoot. I'll give you a second to think about that one. I'm Sailor Jerry. I'm here with, you have to uh, come up with a cocktail or like spirit themed name. Oh, uh, I am the last word. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> assertive. Just a little bit. Just a little. And uh, yeah, we're here. We're a couple of tipsy photographers who have had quite a bit to drink. But I think that, uh, you know, it gets the creative juices flowing, helps put you in the right mindset. And that's what what's uh, important. Right. Last word. I mean, you get the last word. So, yes, I agree. I believe there is a famous writing quote that says write drunk, edit sober. And that does apply to photography in this case. Very true. Drunk or inebriated in some sense, but I wouldn't recommend <laughs> editing. I don't know. I edit this podcast. No. I was going to say, don't edit anything, <laughs> but I, I do edit out some stuff. <laughs> uh, I won't edit out this though, Jess. Here we go. Here's the challenge. You and I right now before the... Uh, before the song ends, right? We're limited. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm explaining the rules for so long, but we only have the song to go. Hopefully you understand those are the rules. We're gonna come up with a photography themed cocktail right now. So we'll throw it together. Uh, you and me, if someone just said, here's a, you're on the bar, right? Picture it scenario. Mm -hmm. On the bar, someone says, I need a photography themed cocktail. How are we gonna do that for them? Go. Uh, oh. The spirit, the spirit in it is, I don't yeah, know, what's I the need most. Spirit. What's the most visual of all spirits? <laughs> oh, the visual of all spirits. How about tequila? Does okay, you have, sure. Usually have particular thoughts in your brain when you picture tequila. Right, right, right. And then we need some things that are shaped like lenses, you know, maybe we need like something like circular. So some citrus, some lemons, some limes, since it is tequila, yeah. grapefruit as well, perhaps. Yes, um, grapefruit juice. What else Fu is photography Fuji, themed? Fuji, Fuji film. Fiji Fuji film. Fuji film. Fuji, Fuji film. film. <laughs> so we can make it uh, island themed somehow. I don't oh, know. okay. <laughs> island themed. We'll make it. We'll make it a tropical drink. Throw in okay. some pineapple in there too. Nice. Some, from the island vibes. How about okay. that? Okay. That's not bad. What are we calling it? The Fuji film. Done. The Fuji Boom. film. Boom. <laughs> Yeah. Boom, Fuji film Love cocktail. It. There you go. Okay, wow, that was pretty intense. Uh, <laughs> this is not the tipsy photographer podcast. I actually don't recommend being real drunk when you're doing your photo shoots or your video shoots. Probably not. Probably no. not. <laughs> no, especially it's hard to focus. Especially when uh, you know expensive gear is involved. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm real. Like you, some people call me Jerry. I don't really know how to sail, but I can canoe pretty well. So that's, that's similar. That's yeah, close enough. It's pretty similar. But I am your photographer, Jared Poirier. And I am here with another photographer whose name is Jess Morton. Good afternoon. That's awesome. Jess Morton, the last word. And what are we talking about uh, on the Photography Friends podcast today, Jess? We are talking about cocktail photography today. Oh, are we? Seriously? Shit. All of my notes are um, on dog all of my notes are on dog photography. That's okay. Oh, I have a cat. <laughs> we're we're at an impasse there, my friend. I, uh -oh. I cannot recommend <laughs> dog photography related things. No, it's okay. I actually have uh, I have notes on uh, cocktail photography, so it's oh, good. All good. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, but before <laughs> we, <laughs> before we can talk about any of that, uh, I have to tell you about something awesome, which is the fact that this podcast has a sponsor. Jess, we are sponsored by CloudSpot, the easiest way for photographers to deliver and sell their photos online. Uh, you know, you take some photos for somebody. You just don't, you don't want to just send them the old Google Drive link. You know, you want to roll up the red carpet for your clients. You want custom galleries. You want effortless downloads, things like that. Uh, I've been using CloudSpot now uh, ever since 
I discovered it on Instagram. And yeah, uh, the way that it like automatically creates galleries for you, uh, the like title page feature, just like the presentation of everything. I find that it actually ends up like saving you some time if you uh, present things in a nice way, like maybe clients will ask you to edit them a little bit less or something. <laughs> it's po it is possible, Jess, it's possible. <laughs> it's all about that presentation. Uh, you, as a listener of this podcast, Jess, or anybody, can get, uh, <laughs> they can get 20% off any monthly plan for the first 12 months by signing up for a free account and then using the code FRIENDS, you know, like the show Friends, with Chandler and all those guys. Uh, friends at checkout. And that's CloudSpot. That's the sponsor. And now we're going to talk about cocktail photography. Uh, Jess, you do cocktail photography sometimes. Yes, I do. Uh, at the moment, it's mostly for myself, for fun. And I would say that I recently listened to that podcast episode of yours that was with your friend who did his camera upgrade. And I have realized that I have been using dinosaur technology to make those pictures happen on my Instagrams. Mm. So that is an ex a skill in itself, I would like to say. <laughs> I was you, like, wait, all of my stuff is like at least six years old. Oh, my. You, you've <laughs> been uh, working hard. That's uh, the episode with Tristan. I think it's like episode 67, 68, something like that. I don't know. Something like Anyways. that. This one's episode 70. So this is actually uh, a super important moment, you know? Amazing. I feel yeah. honored to be on the 70th episode. Thank you. Yeah. If this episode was um, a, a Galapagos turtle, <laughs> it, it, it would be just like starting a uh, turtle high school. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. A Galapagos Still turtles. Young. Are they the turtles that live for a long time? Are those Galapagos turtles? I'm not sure. There's some they, turtles they, that live like forever. Not forever. They're the turtles that have been around for a long, long time. Okay. So we can well. learn from them from a biological standpoint, I All right. think. All right. Well, <laughs> luckily, luckily, this isn't a turtle podcast. So no, no. No, it's a cocktail photography podcast. I've done a little bit of cocktail photography myself. I really enjoy doing it. Uh, Jess actually referred me a gig uh, for a spirit company, actually a non-alcoholic spirit company. So, but I still got, yes. I, I still had drinks. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was cool. It was a uh, interesting, like different, very different thing than what I was used to. Right. And it was. Yeah. Uh, a really good challenge to match like the style that they already had right like um yeah let's get into that a little bit like what is kind of your approach to cocktail photography like is is it matching is it actually a very creative thing where you get to do what you want or is it just more about like matching what the brand wants you to do well for me a lot of it is doing my own thing uh because i've been working on it for a couple of years i've learned to develop my own style based on the resources that I have. Uh, when I work with places like Sobri, that non-alcoholic spirit company you mentioned, who are wonderful to work with, even if I'm not taking the pictures, which is the case for the cocktails that I design for them, because I mostly do mixology work, I mm -hmm. still have to take a reference photo for them. So they know what the, the drink is supposed to look like, what's my intention for presentation, because that is also super important, especially if we're trying to get other people to use the product in these unique ways. So that is super important. And anytime you submit a cocktail for a competition, that is also the case because I've done that in the past where yes. I've submitted cocktails for competitions and you still have to require to send a picture. Sometimes they'll specify whether it has to be on Instagram as part of the entry, in which case you actually have to put in a lot more effort and make sure that the lighting is perfect and all this other stuff. Or sometimes it's just a reference photo, like what I do with Sobri, but I still want to put yeah. effort into it to make sure that my intention is translated properly and nothing's lost along Damn. the way. That's such an yeah. interesting point, like right, right off the bat that like just in your general, you know, because obviously like cocktail photography isn't the main thing that pays your bills. You're like obviously a, a mixologist first. We should probably establish that, right? Like that's, <laughs> your, that's your main thing, working at the bar school and teaching people mixology and, you know, uh, being an authority on mixology that's like the the main thing that you do but it is funny that just in doing that then cocktail photography comes into play that's uh yeah pretty interesting that that pops out right away 
Yeah, I had to basically teach myself how to do it because if you want, if you want someone to get you for work in mixology related stuff, you do have yeah. to have something to show for it. And that was me being like, okay, let's use some candles for non-direct light because huh. that's what ruins the picture. Direct light is like one of the biggest challenges with making any sort of photography, a uh, cocktail photography thing because everything's in glass and glass reflects light in ways that you don't want in your picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so earlier this year when we were in the middle of the last shutdown for the pandemic, the sister bar that uh, the bar school that I run lives inside, we decided to open up a retail arm. And part of that was taking pictures of the products we were selling in that retail store, mm -hmm. which we learned a lot from that experience through a bunch of mistakes of lighting is the worst. Um, <laughs> lighting is the worst because every time we tried to light it, the glass bottle would just reflect everything. And we're like, this is not what we want. So it was a huge challenge just in figuring out how we wanted it to look and get that in the final picture. Yeah, for sure. It's a lot of like trial and error, right? You like set up the lights mm -hmm. a certain way. Maybe you have like a flash, maybe you have a couple of options, uh, just like video lights or something like that. And you kind of experiment, take a couple shots, be like, oh, these all look horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like getting the consistency too right is very difficult because you're like sure it's a sunny day we'll throw that cocktail out on the you know we've all seen on instagram that like picture with like the sunset with the nice orange behind the yeah. old fashioned there or whatever um yeah and that's it's just not like that simple to do it and it's not obviously repeatable because that beautiful sunset only lasts so long so then you're trying to figure out okay how do I achieve this in a repeatable way so that across our entire Instagram, every single photo is looking the same? Yeah, you do have to like experiment quite a bit. But that is one of the fun things about photography, I think, right? And when I was doing that uh, shoot for Sobri, like the setup that I actually ended up using wasn't what I thought it would be, right? Like when I initially mm -hmm. started, I was like, okay, hey, I'm going to use my flash and like do it some fancy way and then I was just like okay it ended up being that like a little like desk lamp and like a video light kind of combination like two-point lighting was getting it where it wasn't like glaring up and, and yeah. stuff like that it is tough though to to nail it right and like get no glare off the glass and then get the colors right and everything definitely a challenge oh definitely and I think that's just part of the experience is that and this kind of relates to product photography a little bit that everything you're taking a picture of is not the same as taking a picture of something in a glass. Yeah. I've found the most success in the past by doing a lot of planning and a lot of test shots. Anytime I've rushed the process is the time that I'm like, I am not happy with this. And you're, and you're about to pack up your stuff and you're like, okay, time to put the light box away. But then you're like, wait, this angle looks better. And then that's the picture that you suddenly are way more happy with. It's just annoying how time consuming it seems to take but it's so necessary to do oh, that oh yeah i definitely recommend testing stuff out beforehand even if you think that you know right you're like oh yeah i've done i've done that before it's no problem flash photography you do the settings iso blah blah i do it all the time right but when you yep. yeah when it is something very specific and you're like shit let me do a couple of test shots you know even if you do have to like make your uh, wife, boyfriend, cat, dog, whoever it is, stand in <laughs> for some photos, you know, like it is uh, super important to test that stuff out. And then when you're going to shoot, especially if you're shooting with the client, which, uh, you know, that's happening more and more these days. Yeah. Um, yeah. You definitely want to be ready. Um, there's still experimentation on set, obviously when you're shooting, but, uh, a good, a good amount, just like with a good cocktail, Jess, you know, yeah. some, uh, some, <laughs> Research and development does come in handy, right? Oh, definitely. And you're never always going to be happy with the first version of it is something that's very true in cocktail development and taking a picture of a cocktail. True. Yeah, yeah. You're going to go through like multiple versions and obviously uh, overshooting as well a little bit, like taking more photos than you think that you actually need. Yeah. Because to get 10 good photos, you kind of have to take like 100 photos. <laughs> oh yeah which is unfortunate but it is pretty true yeah 
that's that's the thing is like you you know you just want that one picture but then how do you get there is always yeah. the problem and and sometimes I look back on the pictures I've taken I'm like oh what if I just took like another five would I have been more happy with those yeah. and you get so caught up in that moment it's yeah. like nope time is of the essence in this case you can't uh can't do that to yourself though you just have to move on no. move on to the <laughs> next shoot <laughs> you know part of uh cocktail photography you know not that i'm like the expert or whatever i'm just more <laughs> talking like what the little bit of it that i've done i did some uh i actually did some cocktail videos for uh for a restaurant on king street for Iskari. so that's a real thing and we we shot photos of that too so yeah i guess i've done a little bit uh a big part of it is like set dressing and stuff like that right like I, I, yes. that's a weird way to put it um but like i don't know staging set dressing however you want to describe that that can be one of the most creative parts of it. And like, that's when it actually becomes like a storytelling thing, which I really enjoy. That's where it gets like, yeah, yeah it gets pretty artsy at that level. Like, do you find yourself doing that a lot where you're like, all right, we right, let's say like, you know, our, uh, our photo themed cocktail from before, if we have to set dress it, you know, it's kind of beach themed. Uh, it's basically, a, um, a pineapple greyhound or something but uh yeah yeah maybe we put it in a blender let's get a little bit more creative we put it in a blender do oh, okay kind of margarita style all right so what are we putting on that uh in that photo to shoot it well first off we gotta make sure we have uh a good garnish to go with it like yes. it's a blended drink it's probably got to go in a hurricane glass which i know is like a little tacky but yo it's a blended drink that's what you're asking for uh, is that what those stupid margarita glasses that have like the oh no i know what you're talking about but no it's like a tall version of that where it's got like almost this hourglass shape that often uh tropical drinks will go in that i found before and that's pretty common for like pina coladas you've probably seen them in those types of glasses before oh okay it's, like, tall right, and like got right. like almost this hourglass shape where it's a little flared at the top we'll try to Which post case... one on the instagram or something yeah uh, I'll, I'll help you find a picture it'll make sense uh but we got to do that. And then it's probably got to have like some sort of background that's very uh, sunny or, you know, beach feeling. So like you could have a sunset or a fake sunset or just like bright colored background. If you want it to be more like studio theme, you could do mm. like orange and yellow and pink in the background. You got to have a pineapple wedge or pineapple leaves probably would be the more modern pineapple interpretation. Leaves. Yeah. Pineapple leaves and probably some sort of ridiculous looking edible flower to yeah. make it be yeah. like, this is tropical. You want this in a sunset. Right. And a way of having sand, but getting it out of the set without making a big mess with the sand. So that's going to be tough. Oh, that's, you want to have real just, sand. You you don't even have to get real sand. You could yeah. do like graham cracker crumbs or oh, coconut sugar. Look like sand. Looks like, really sand like yeah. hmm, Interesting. You know, something that's not going to be annoying to get out of okay. other and, food things <laughs> hear me out hear me out okay I live cr live crabs yes <laughs> yes but they gotta be the little ones because otherwise it's gonna knock over the drink and then we're not having a good time uh, it might be really difficult to work with i don't know it might be tough <laughs> we just have but, to go to a beach where they have crabs how hard can yeah. that be in, in the middle of the country where we're not really close yeah. to the beaches we'll figure it out It'll i do be like fine. i do like a challenge you know yeah but yeah, if you can really like, that's what I find impresses people quite a bit with cocktail photography is like, if you can theme it and yeah, have kind of a little story or a little gimmick to it, then it kind of adds an extra layer, right? Yeah. And also what you put in the setting of the picture can help express the contents of the drink. People mm. really like to see that too. Um, like say you made something that had a lot of spices in it, you could put the whole spices around the, the glass in the picture to sort of 
translate mm, yeah. what the flavors of that cocktail are to the person who's looking at it. Because sometimes seeing liquid in a glass doesn't really tell us a lot about what the experience of the drink is. And that's For a big sure, challenge. Yeah. yeah, if you have like a basil smash, it would be cool to have like some basil leaves in there. And like you could put like some raspberries or blackberries around if you were kind of adding extra flavors or whatever. Yeah, and, and it's all about, and I've learned this a lot from... Uh, when I see marketing from the sister company that I work for sometimes called Founders Original, which you know of, uh, I've seen them do the marketing. They do all their own marketing and all their own photography for their Instagram, which looks good, by the way, if you ever want to look at it for good cocktail photography. And it's a lot of how do we translate the ingredients of this to the person, but what is the experience of this product to the person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You mentioned uh, gear and not really wanting to talk about gear that much. Well, no, I, I'm I'm happy to talk <laughs> about gear. I just l- listening to that episode and realizing how out of date my gear was. I was slightly impressed with myself that I could still make my pictures Instagram worthy. And I'm like, I need an upgrade is really what I'm saying to myself, which, you know, I'll have a separate conversation about, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I I always encourage a good upgrade, you know, as long as you're going to make the money back on it. And I am a big camera nerd, so I love that stuff, obviously, because I have a podcast about photography. (laughs) About (laughs) photography, so you would hope so. Yeah, so what gear are you rocking right now? How are you shooting these photos? On your phone or what? (laughs) So I have have an old school DSLR from I don't remember when because I've had it since college. Sweet. And... And it's a Nikon D5100, which I'm pretty okay. sure they don't Sweet. make anymore. They might have discontinued uh, them, yeah. Yeah, uh, which is fine. I, I really like the camera. I famously, not famously, famous to myself, I borrowed it from my younger brother and then never returned it and then just used it <laughs> for myself <laughs> for the past, like, it's probably 10 years old, this thing. Famously. Um, famously to myself so if if, uh, my brother is listening to this I'm sorry and I will return it to you at some point in the future (laughs) it might just be a a while still (laughs) but he knows he knows I think he's totally forgotten about it but that's what I've been using and I find the only challenge with that like the it's been really good to me like I've used it for so many things over the years when I thought I was going to do journalism for a living and I was like going around speaking to people on web series sets, seeing all like, Hey, you want to talk to me? I'll take some pictures of your thing and interview you. So I did video with it as well in the past. And that's like, it's the old school camera where they, before they did the upgrade where you could have unlimited runtime in on your film. So it stops every 20 minutes. And I had to figure out how to work around that, which is a creative challenge in itself. Yeah, that's always an yeah. annoying restriction on cameras, you know? That sucks. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. It really just forces you to adapt, which for me, it's like, I could be mad about it or I could figure it out because yeah. no one's going to fix it for me. Yeah, so. every every piece of gear has limitations, right? You could spend like yeah. five grand on a camera and still have problems with it or things that I can't do. So, you know, there's always, it always uh, matters that, you know, that you're the photographer <laughs> yeah <laughs> the camera is not going to shoot much by itself right so yeah and it's it's just been fun to learn how to use it was like the first part was like what does the iso do and how do i do the white balance and that took some time because i just refused to read manuals and i'm like yeah. i'm just going to learn it by feeling the, the thing what um, what does iso do i don't know one day we'll figure it out <laughs> one day <laughs> All I know is it's in relation to lighting for the camera and how much light is let into your lens for your picture. That's how I understand it. But I could be completely wrong. (laughs) It's like uh, I'm not an expert. (laughs) It's just like a way of raising exposure. Basically, people say that it boosts the sensitivity of your sensor. That's not exactly true. It's more like um, like raising. I, I compare it to like raising the gain. Right. Like so you get more you get more brightness but you also get more like grain in the picture when you boost ISO. So yeah. that's how I explain it. Most people just say it increases the sensitivity of your sensor. And then people kind of say like, oh, that makes sense to me, but that's not exactly true. Anyways, whatever. That's Oh, not, I just learned something. Yay. Yeah. 
That's why you come on the podcast and listen to the podcast to learn stuff. Yeah. That's why I started the podcast because then now I have now I have like a reason to learn stuff. You know, it's important to make yourself learn stuff every single week and make yourself have a podcast. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I learn something new every day. I'm at work and a student tries to ask me a weird question about alcohol, and I'm like. Well, let's figure it out. I don't know the yeah, answer, but we'll like, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Then you're on Wikipedia late at night and, you know. Yeah. Figure, a lot of a lot out. of Google and, and YouTube videos, because there's a lot of YouTube documentaries on uh, production for alcohol products, which is pretty interesting. Oh, true. So, yeah. Yeah. Some of, the, some of those, uh, those hacks have already been hacked, eh? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's true, really true, interesting. True. The rabbit holes out there on the internet of how do we distill something? Oh, let me tell you. And <laughs> it depends yeah, on where you are. <laughs> that's a very good tip as well. If you don't understand something, like go and look it up. Even like if you do end up upgrading your camera, like I'm still learning shit about my camera. I've had it for two or three weeks, but I'm still figuring oh. it out. You got lots of learning left to do. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, you just yeah. you just got it. If it's only been a couple of weeks, you just got yeah. it. Well, and then I like went through all the menus, and I was like, "Yeah, I know how this works perfectly." But then once you're <laughs> actually sh once you're actually shooting, that's uh, a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but <I've> been <laughs> definitely making, been there before. <laughs> I've been making it work. It's been fun. It's a good uh, new type of challenge. Uh, what about lighting? Since we're still we're still in gear talk, we forgot gear to do talk. like a cool gear talk intro. Maybe when I'm <laughs> editing it, I'll go back and put in a, like some guitar solos and like gear talk. Diddle, diddle, diddle. Ooh. Give, Give me that, that gear, gear or something. something. I like that gear. All the gear. <laughs> gear. So. <laughs> The lighting, and I'm sure anyone who is into photography or does this for a living relates to this. Lighting is like your best friend and your worst enemy. Half the time, it doesn't want to do what you want it to do, and you have to improvise around it. So a lot of it is figuring out how to execute soft lighting, which yeah. is really challenging. And indirect lighting is my biggest thought on that. Obviously, setting something outside natural light is the best thing ever and it's a lot easier to work with in theory but then it's temporary so that makes it hard especially when you want to adjust as you go right what if you were like you know what I don't like the way that garnish looks let's do this again or the glass is in the wrong place in the frame let's move it around or I want a different prop in here to help express the contents of the drink yeah and you're going to spend a lot of time then... adjusting then you got to call Superman and ask him to move the sun back to where it was. Yeah. And like, that's just expensive, right? That's adding to the budget. And like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I feel like Superman's got better things to do with his time by, is, besides helping me with my photography projects. But mm, depends. I appreciate the help. Yeah, depends which Superman, <laughs> depends which Superman yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So that's something I would recommend. Yeah. You know, you don't even need a lot of fancy lighting equipment. I know lighting equipment is massively expensive but if you are going to have a setup to do this make sure that you can set it up that's not going to be annoying for yourself because then it's mm -hmm. just going to be more frustrating when you finally get to the work where you're like okay now I can put the glass in the picture like make it easy for yourself if you can you know you can buy those like paper lamps from Ikea I hate to throw Ikea out there, but they're so right on that. And just setting up enough of those will help you with soft lighting. Crazy. Um, yeah. They're, they're like nicely filtered yeah. through the paper and stuff. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And, and like that's super, really good. super prone to catching on fire, I'm sure. But yes, definitely. I've not started a fire as of yet, thankfully. Um, Keep an eye even on, I have, on set. I have a new gas range stove, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm not planning on setting anything on fire, but the risks are now elevated slightly. You, um, <laughs> you maybe just inspired my new lighting setup for all photography <laughs> and videos from now on. I just show up with like 30 paper Ikea lamps <laughs> and just put them around the whole outside and like you're gluing them to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That would actually and look really good, though. I don't know. That would look pretty good. Yeah. And it's it's like and the other thing I should mention also is you don't need you need to have more than one source of light, which is something you discovered as well when you were doing those yeah. sobri videos. Because just one 
light is not going to be enough because you need fill lights and you need key lights. And now I'm sounding really technical, like I'm still no, in film cool. school. The people um, <laughs> who uh, listen to the podcast like to hear about key lights and things. So it's cool. Yeah. So I find that's really helpful because, again, you're sort of battling this thing with the glass and the lighting. And a lot of it is just... Um, Think of it as in terms, you're not putting the light directly on the object, you're putting light in a different direction that's reflecting off of a surface that provides you with soft light, which is something yeah. that we learned uh, when we were doing uh, product photography for our spirit house is uh, we were very, <laughs> we took a minute to be like, we don't know what we're doing, we need to figure this out. So we asked advice of uh, one of the people who work on the founder's original side for their marketing team. And uh, she was very kind to show one of our staff how that made sense. And we are just like, yeah. we've been doing this all wrong. We have no idea. And, and you see that in other tutorials, there's some really cool folks on Instagram who do a lot of tutorials on how to do cocktail photography. And it's all indirect light. It's like we're pointing light at a surface that's close to the object that is reflecting the light back at the object, but in a way that is softer and not harsh and really highlights the contents of the drink yeah i think so. that's like the first mistake that everybody makes with flash photography in general is they just yeah. like get that flash put it on that camera put it to max <laughs> put it in front of someone's face boom and you're like all right well uh it's really cool that their eyes look like they're on fire <laughs> <laughs> super overexposed but it's fine I mean, it, it is good. If, it's okay. <laughs> it is good if you're doing. It's actually Comic Con this weekend, so if you wanted to oh, do kind yeah. of like an X Men, like Cyclops, Eyes on Fire vibe, uh, then yeah, then yeah, it would work for that. <laughs> <laughs> just for that, though. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty specific use case. Um, yeah, like filter. Obviously, just like putting a soft filter on stuff, right? That's why there's like soft boxes, yeah. and all those yeah. soft boxes kind of suck. I don't really like them, but also just like video mm -hmm. lights that have a filter in front of them um for your flash you can have like i use like a big reflector on the back of my flash that i really like mm -hmm. i find that you can like bounce light around in a nice way like that you could filter that too but i don't know i just usually turn it down a bit it does the trick yeah and and that's the other thing is that you do want lots of light because it helps yeah. give you more detail in yeah. the final picture and that's so important in cocktails because you know something as it does sound boring in theory. It's like liquid in a glass. How can we make this exciting? And seeing the detail of, of that will help make it more interesting. I find, you know, if, especially if we're putting in like props or interesting garnishes or other things in the picture to make it more interesting. So you do need that a light. It's just challenging to work with. Yeah, I always like to uh, ask guests this question as well. When it comes to getting gigs in this particular area of photography, how do you go about doing that? Like, do you have any advice or did you just kind of stumble into it? Be amazing at cocktailing and be amazing at photography at the same time. Is that how you pull it off? Uh, I would say it would be a couple of things. For one, you got to make connections. I know this is really old school, but it's all about who you know. So cool story of how I got connected with Sobri um, because they're one of my main gigs right now. I love working with them. They're very pleasant. Um, I know the person who started the company. They're a little, because, they're a little rowdy though. Yeah. <laughs> they're a little, they, they know how to have a good time for a non-alcoholic spirits company. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but I would say, so the owner of the company, his name's Bob. Nice man. Uh, very much. He and I met way before Sobri even existed. He took one of the first courses that I ever taught at the bartending school that I now run. Um, and somehow we had a good first impression of each other. And he handed me his card and is like, I like what you're saying. 
here's my card. Uh, I'll connect with you in the future. And I was one of the first people to try his product. I was one of the first people to give feedback and help him design drinks and all that stuff. I'm not the only person he's worked with. He's worked with some other really amazing mixologists and photographers. Um, but that's how I got my in. And they like working with me because I'm available, but I'm also consistent and I'm nice to work with. So that's the cool thing about that. It's like I made that connection through a job I already had. And then I just made sure I took it somewhere. And also, I do show my Instagram to people I work with and people I meet. And I put time into making that because yeah. most, if not all the drinks, aside from the sobery stuff, is stuff that I literally made up and shot myself. And that's there as a portfolio is the way I like to look at it. It's like in case anyone wants proof that I know what I'm talking about, here's a cool Instagram to show these really nice pictures that I put together and they're using products that people know and this is what it looks like and this is maybe how you can make it if I feel like sharing the recipe I don't know it's but I'll usually tell you the contents of the drink is often what I'll do so that people know what it is and then they're like oh maybe I will drink that that sounds interesting that's the idea there so those yeah. two things yeah sometimes it's like deceptively simple right it's like you have to tell somebody hey, I do the thing. And they're like, yes. do you? And then you have to be, it's like a two-step process, right? That's the first step. And then the second step is like, I do. Look at this thing. Like, I have a portfolio for you to look at, right? That's kind of the next bit. Yeah, and it definitely helps. And it's, the thing is, I'm doing it on my own time, but I'm doing it because I like to do it. So yeah. for me, it was a lot of like, I'll submit a cocktail to a competition or I'll make up a cocktail that I wanted to drink that nobody else is making and I can't get it at a bar. So I'll make it up and take a picture of it. And now it exists in the world of the internet that someone else can look at. Yeah, that is yeah. one of the very nice things about knowing how to make drinks, isn't it? The, if you want one, you just make it. <laughs> that's that's the superpower when you're a you're mixologist. Like, that's I, don't for need sure. to, I don't need to pay $17. I'll just make it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's more work if you do it yourself. But that's it's a lot the, more work, but you know, as long yeah. if you have someone with you and, uh, you know, you make make one for them as well. And People yes, always absolutely. like that. People always, uh, people always enjoy a, a private mixology session, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And the other thing I would mention is if you're going to put together a portfolio, make sure that you are consistent in the work you're putting out there. Not all of my pictures look exactly the same, but they, in general, they follow a similar style and people gravitate towards that because they're like, oh, you take the time to make it look a certain way. And that says that you put effort into it, uh, which sounds super simple, but it does give a, give a good first impression to the person who's looking at it, which is important. Yep. That you're putting like thought into it and there's different ways of establishing a style. You can just have like super uh, like moody photos and make everything like blue. That's the way to do it. Right. Or you can kind of go the other direction and just like blow everything out and just make it look like super overexposed or just do a straight black and white, just black and white everything. That's that would be cool. Right I, I wouldn't do black and white Ooh. though. Cause then you're losing a lot of the visual cues with colors. I find I don't know. that's just my opinion though. I'm not, I'm not telling you how to take your pictures, Jared. That's just my opinion. <laughs> it could be a style. I'm just saying there's lots, of oh, lazy, could. there's lots of lazy ways that you can be like, this is my style on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, just put extra grain in there. People will like that, right? Yeah, I don't know. No. I think no. I, ended up, I ended up having a kind of style myself. I don't know. Yeah, it, it goes both ways, right? Because like as we were saying earlier, it is sometimes... It's having your own approach and your own style. Like, I guess that will get you the jobs, but maybe what yeah. will help you keep the jobs is your ability to like give the client what they actually want. Like if Jameson comes yeah. to me, I'm not going to be like, Jameson, you know what you guys should do? Uh, circus, circus <laughs> vibe, start selling it like that, like, or skateboarding, <laughs> skateboarding and circuses. That's Jameson's all about that now. And they're like, going to be like, uh, I'm not so sure, dude. Well, here's a picture of a clown on a skateboard drinking Jameson. What do you think about that? <laughs> A million dollars uh please <laughs> that, yeah and that's and that's a huge challenge right um with working with clients is like yeah. yes you have your portfolio yes you have your style but they're hiring you because they're you're helping to market their product yeah. that's the reality yeah. right and you want to make sure you're 
you're consistently on brand. I'm like one of those people who gets really nerdy about branding. Every time mm -hmm. I see consistent or well put together branding uh, for a spirit brand on Instagram, I get way too excited. I'm that person who's like, have you seen this? The branding is excellent. <laughs> Nobody cares but me. Um, but I think it's just really cool when you're thinking about how we market things to consumers. Because yeah. the thing with alcohol is you have to convince people to buy it and you have to convince people to keep buying it. And that's usually through how we market it to you in terms of the experience. There's a lot of types of vodka out there. That's yeah. For sure. yeah. Yeah. But do they all have the same feel as Grey Goose vodka <laughs> are that they got all, its start in nightclubs? <laughs> are they all associated with P. Diddy? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> An artist who hasn't had a song out in like the last 20 years. <laughs> I could be totally okay. wrong. Good people to know. Are, you know. I don't, I don't know anything that. about know. the guy, so I can't I'll go say. search him up. I'll search him up on uh, Spotify later. I don't want to waste everyone's time right now. Uh, I do have one more question, though. We've got a pretty, we got yes. like, you know, 45 ish minutes or whatever of podcasts. So Dope. that's, that's pretty sweet. I don't know. I think a lot of it made sense. Pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's a huge section on lighting, but I'm sure it made sense to most people. <laughs> uh, yeah, it made sense to me. We, yes. we dropped we drop some camera words in there, so yeah. you know, I'm sure people will be happy. Uh, do you think that in order to get into cocktail photography that you actually need to know how to make cocktails? Is that an essential part of it or not? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Just straight yes. I, 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 a part of me was like, but do you, is there a possibility? How, do you need is to know how to play music to do concert photography? No, I, you no. know what? You should ask your last guest that because I feel <laughs> like she would know because uh, she did do that. Yeah. Um, but the other, the thing is, if you're going to do cocktail photography specifically, the most successful people I know who have done this, um, and I can name a couple like uh, Cheers to Happy Hour. They're a really amazing account who obviously they know exactly what they're doing. Their style is very consistent. Their pictures are beautiful, but you know that they know exactly what they're doing when they're putting together that drink. Um, another example would be Liquid Culture. Uh, shout out to Monica, very lovely lady, but she knows her stuff with cocktail making as well. She's also worked as a bartender. So she's not coming at the product in a way where, oh no, well, we'll just put this in a daiquiri. You know, that's not a great way to go about branding it because if you want to market a product to a consumer and they're going to buy it and use it in specific ways, you've got to know how to use that product. That's the way I want to look at it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and for me, the reason I like doing this is I like to make cocktails more accessible to more people because cocktails, especially as a culture, can be really intimidating. Oh, and yes, right, yes. right, especially with some of these weird ingredients that we hear, we don't know anything about. And I find that is a huge roadblock for a lot of people who have the potential to really appreciate this culture, which would benefit all of us, by the way. More people who want to do drink these things, the more we sell it. So. That's the way I like to look at it. So for me, if I'm going to express how to use this product in a way that both the client and the consumer will be happy and understand, I got to know how to use it if I'm going to put it in a drink. I can't just be like, it's over ice in a glass. It's fine, right? But is that yeah. the way the consumer is going to appreciate it? So, and that is a lot of how cocktail photography and videography works is explaining to the consumer how they would want to use this product what kind of drinks do they want to make that's mm -hmm. a huge part of it i think that's super important good yeah. good question i never thought about that but that's yeah. really important <laughs> if you're if you're gonna undertake it uh if you want to do a shoot like this i think at, at the very least team up with somebody who does know how to do it who does who is a, is a mixologist or has worked in a bar just is passionate about making cocktails yes because let's take like the simplest drink, right? Like the very first drink that you learn, what is it? Uh, is it like a cocktail? Yeah. Oh, okay. So old fashioned. There That's you a go. Good example. You did. Yeah. You thank you for not disappointing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Because <laughs> <laughs> you you would have screwed up my whole story. 
Oh, right? okay, good. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the simplest drink, right? It's an old-fashioned. It's two whiskey, one sugar, you know, one simple syrup, whatever you want to call yeah. it, and uh, and some bitters and an yep. orange peel, right? Yes. It doesn't get yes. any more simple than that. So if you were to say to somebody, okay, make an old-fashioned and shoot a beautiful picture of it, if you just make some stupid old fashioned in a regular old rocks glass and put crappy ice in there that like half melts by the time you take the photo and just like a uh, like shitty, like an orange slice that you stick in there, right? Oh, no. Somebody who it's a simple, simple, simple drink, but somebody who actually has made like, you know, a hundred old fashions or I've probably made like a thousand old fashions at this oh, point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just for myself, Jess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know how long that I'm time period judging. was when you made those thousand old fashions. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> I made them in bars, okay? So that's all right. <laughs> I believe you. And for and other weddings. people. For, and weddings. <laughs> for, and other, for people. other people. Yeah, but like someone who's, you know, made a bunch is going to be like, okay, if we want to actually like photograph this, make it look special, we're going to get nice glassware. We're going to cut the garnish in like some ridiculous crazy way and loop it around in a circle and you know we're gonna light it this way we're even gonna have like you said maybe some candles we know the flavors of the drink we know what's behind the drink putting an actual orange in there that bottle of bitters is actually in there right yes and you know warm kind of campfire setting because we know the drink because we've made it a million times even though it is so simple like it's 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 a fried egg you know of yeah. the cocktail world like it's it's the hamburger and fries you know what i mean like simple simple but to actually make it something special and something memorable is that then becomes you know comes from experience i think yeah absolutely i i say this all the time to folks i meet that i'm teaching you know something as simple as an old-fashioned is really easy to mess up if you aren't paying attention to True. little details yeah. right and that can be translated in the guest experience or in the experience if you're taking a picture of it right you can make style choices that really help uh, upgrade what you're looking at sometimes i look at sometimes i look at cocktail pictures or uh like videos of sponsored posts that are like meant to be advertisements and i'm just like that ice is terrible why did you use that ice and why did you use that glass and i get so hung up on things that aren't really that important. But for me, if I wanted to establish a specific concept or sell you a certain experience, that's not the choices I maybe would have made, right? So if you see like a big clear king cube, a large ice cube in the glass that your old fashioned is in, you're already like, ooh, that's gonna be an upscale experience, yeah. right? Yeah. For example. Yeah, right away, just get that king cube. And uh, even if your drinks suck, like if you have a king cube, <laughs> it's gonna... the king cube makes it look pretty it's like the, the, the whiskey could be terrible but the king cube makes it look like it's amazing so yeah, yeah there's that <laughs> yeah it can be uh what's like the what's the grimiest whiskey i was gonna say wisers but i actually kind of like wisers i can't i don't want to i don't want to name a name and then regret it down the road Really? They want me to work for them. Proper, tw <laughs> proper 12. Proper 12. Okay, yes. No, proper 12. <laughs> I will. No, thank you. No, thank you. Proper 12. And, I found it. And the hilarious thing is, I think they would have done better if they just marketed it differently. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Because they, they marketed it or advertised it like it would be your next Jameson. Because conveniently, they made the bottle look just like a Jameson bottle, right? The way it's a green glass shaped bottle, the way it's shaped and the label is shaped. I'm like, convenient looks very uh, similar to Jameson. It's probably, probably yeah. a coincidence. Probably a coincidence. But, but at the same time, Proper 12 does not taste like any typical whiskey that you would be familiar with. So if they marketed it more as a rye, because I think it's a little more spicy in flavor profile, they probably could have had more success because people are using it in the wrong drinks and they have the wrong expectations when they're drinking it because it was marketed a specific way. So marketing is a bunch of lies, but it works. <laughs> well, you should have hired Jess to construct better lies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Proper 12 probably wouldn't want me to work for them, but yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, something that's not a lie is that this is the end of the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
podcast is almost over. That's called a segue. I'm a professional. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jess, thank you so much for being on here. This was super fun. Uh, I oh, definitely yeah. learned a lot. Definitely uh, got got me thinking about a lot of stuff and it's just uh good to see you it's funny that we actually did this over zoom even though we hang out in real life all the time just we're both busy so we couldn't we're, line it we up both have that's okay full schedules so that's okay yeah. i probably have yeah. a picture of us hanging out together in real life that i can put on instagram anyways uh probably. which is a, which is another segue because one of the things that i do once we've rolled that outro music jess i tell the yes. people to check out our instagram photo yeah. underscore friends underscore pod i'm doing reels on there guys i'm out here i'm busting my ass you know uh i'm doing my best jess do you have a do you have an instagram yes i do so my instagram handle is bartender dot morton morton spelled m-o-r-t-o-n oh, so nice. hopefully you'll be easy to find me i don't upgrade it super often or update it i should say upgrade uh, but I do, I do post to my story fairly often because I like to share Instagram-y cool. mixology articles or recipes that I found that I really like. So you can interact with me in that way if you wish to do so. Yeah, if you want to stay on the on the cusp, you know, you better go follow Jess. Uh, another thing that you can do other than doing things on your phone like on Instagram, you can just tell somebody in real life about this podcast. You're a photographer. Yes. You probably know somebody who also is a photographer, as I like to say, at a certain point, other people just don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them about the podcast. Uh, thank you again to our sponsor, CloudSpot. And thank you to Jess. And before we go, we need something random. Jess, take it away. Oh. My favorite thing to eat for breakfast is an almond croissant. There you go.